Hello there again guys and welcome back to another Paleo Profile. Today we've got an all-time favorite in the Paleo community that was made famous by its appearance in the Walking with Beasts documentary series. The weird, giant predatory mammal that really can't be compared to anything still alive today, Andrew Sarkis. During the 1920s, the American Natural History Museum funded several expeditions into the Mongolian desert to search for fossilized remains. The expedition was headed by the famous paleontologist Henry F. Osborne, discoverer of everything from Tyrannosaurus rex to Velociraptor. Osborne went into the desert finding many strange and large fossilized organisms, but probably the most bizarre and memorable of the entire expedition was the discovery of a single skull without a lower jaw. The skull was filled with sharp teeth and was vaguely canine in shape. Such a find likely wouldn't have been of any importance, if not for the fact it was massive. Over twice the size of that an Alaskan brown bear, the skull alone was about the length of a human arm, almost three feet in length. It dwarfed the skulls of any modern predator. Osborne gave the beast the name Andrew Sarkis after famous adventurer, archaeologist, and paleontologist and colleague to Osborne, Roy Chapman Andrews, a real-life Indiana Jones who discovered the first dinosaur eggs. Upon Upon returning to civilization, Osborne found Andrew Sarkis extremely difficult to classify as all he had collected of the creature and all we have today was the single skull and nothing else. The very superficially canine or wolf-like appearance of the skull Osborne found was misleading as upon further examination it was very clear this wasn't a wolf nor closely related to them. He concluded that the jaw and tooth structure of Andrew Sarkis was most similar to that of Masonicids, an extinct group of mammals that are ungulates, a group that includes horses, deer, rhinos, hippos, and many other hooved herbivores. The only thing was is that these animals weren't herbivores, but clearly were predators and ferocious ones at that. They looked like wolves and likely acted like wolves, but had hooves like pigs or horses. A bizarre bunch indeed. Osborne used the more complete fossils of what he considered to be a small relative of Andrew Sarkis, Mesonyx, to estimate its size by scaling up the proportions to find Andrew Sarkis. Osborne speculated that Andrew Sarkis would have been the largest terrestrial predator ever since the extinction of the dinosaurs. This led many to believe Andrew Sarkis was a prehistoric monster, a huge and hulking wolf-like creature. Such an interpretation was depicted commonly in media and most famously in Walking with Beasts. However, subsequent studies have found that Osborne's original Mesonicid Megawolf interpretation of Andrew Sarkis was wrong. It was still an ungulate, but not the type first expected. A 2010 study found that Andrew Sarkis's closest relatives were Intelodonts, Hippos, and Whales, which all belonged to the group Cetacodont Dimorpha. This makes a lot of sense considering how much a resemblance Andrew Sarkis pays to early whales such as Ambulocetus and Basilosaurus in their skulls, and the Intelodonts, also known as Hell Pigs or Terminator Pigs, which are not in fact related to pigs. Man, taxonomy is dumb sometimes. We know now that long ago, before the ancestors of whales and hippos took to the waters, they shared a common ancestor with weird terrestrial hoofed predators with massive skulls and powerful jaws, capable of crushing bone. These relatives were Andrew Sarkis and Entelodonts, which broke off from their common ancestors with hippos and whales and became fast and strong predators. As a result of this classification, Andrew Sarkis' original speculative size based on Mesonyx was greatly reduced, as we now know that Andrew Sarkis likely would have paid a closer resemblance to the hulking and tank-like Entelodonts. The Entelodont proportions might have shrunken the animal down, but nonetheless Andrew Sarkis was still a formidable and mysterious creature. This animal, a bit like a hippo, a bit like a wolf, and a bit like a hell pig, must have been an extremely interesting creature to look at. It ran on hooves and grabbed and crushed prey with powerful jaws. I think these two images are my favorite depictions of the animal as they best encapsulate the strangely alienness of this creature. Simply put, there's nothing like it alive today. Andrew Sarkis lived during the Eocene period, about 45 and 30 million years ago. It likely was a result of the subsequent diversification that occurred after the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum, an extreme climate warming event at the time when the planet was virtually ice-free. Our first primate ancestors began to evolve around the time Andrew Sarkis roamed. Eocene Asia was especially hot and Andrew Sarkis's habitat was mainly along the coastline of an ancient sea. He likely was an opportunist and ate whatever it could get its jaws around, from small reptiles to fish to carcasses that washed up on the shoreline. At this same time, the strange rhino-like bronotheres were widespread and early forms of modern animals like bats and elephants were starting to evolve. In the ocean, the sea serpent-like relatives of Andrew Sarkis, such as Basilosaurus, swam about the ocean with elongate bodies. It was a strange time where animals like we know them today didn't exist, only their primitive and unfamiliar relatives wandered the earth. 
Andrew Sarkis and similar animals likely became extinct as a result of the Indian subcontinent crashing into Asia and forming the Himalayan mountains. The rising of these mountains caused Andrew Sarkis' environment to become increasingly drier and arid. Andrew Sarkis would later be replaced by its stronger-jawed and teledont relatives in hyenodons during the Oligocene. And even longer afterwards, these strange hoofed predators would be entirely replaced by canines and felines, leaving only a single skull from a single individual as its legacy.